Beginning in the early 1700s, South Carolina rice, or Carolina gold, was grown along the marshy coast known as the Low Country. Early colonists tried, without success, to grow cash crops such as tobacco and cotton. But in the subtropical low-lying topography, it was rice that would thrive, but only with substantial human efforts. To encourage rice growth and control weeds and pests, rice planters adopted an elaborate irrigation system in which ocean tidal flows and gravity moved fresh river water in and out of rice ponds. Africans were forced to clear swamps of trees, close them with earthen levees, and then construct an intricate system of dams, floodgates, ditches, and drains. Once built, the entire hydraulic apparatus required technical operations and constant maintenance by skilled Africans. Highest in demand were those from the Sierra Leone region of West Africa, who possessed a strong knowledge of rice cultivation. By the 1750s, Charleston was the wealthiest colonial city, but by the mid-1800s, the price of rice had fallen. The Civil War and a series of hurricanes in the late 1800s damaged many plantations beyond repair. The emancipation of Africans meant a permanent loss of slave labor and an end to rice growing in South Carolina. Many fields were left untended until the early 1900s when northern investors and wealthy individuals began purchasing plantations, managing them for waterfowl and private hunting preserves. While Carolina rice production ended long ago, its environmental and cultural legacy lives on in the Low Country.